Welcome to Film at 50, a podcast that celebrates semi-centennials in the world of cinema. I'm your host, Brian Rowe, and I'm thrilled to welcome Andrew Campbell back to the podcast today. For this first episode of A Month of Terror on Film at 50, the entire month of June, we're highlighting horror films released in the summer of 1972. Our first film this month is Ben, the sequel to 1971's Willard. Ben, an Academy Award nominated horror sequel. Andrew, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I, I just finished watching Ben and it's um, <laughs> it's something. It's quite something. And I, I, I was excited. You told me it was nominated for uh, for best original song. Yeah. Um, and it won the Golden Globe. I read won the Golden won, Globe for best it original won the song. Golden Globe, which is amazing. Uh, and I was just like, okay, well, and I just kept on waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. <laughs> and then if we're, it's like in the very, it's like, it's the outro of the movies. Yeah. Michael Jackson singing Ben. Well, the boy sings it. The main boy, yeah. Danny who is like the most gifted musician child ever in a movie. Like he's just like, oh, I wrote this song. And then what oh is he, fi- what is he, five, six years old, seven? No, yeah. And he's like, and he's like composing the song and then he just sings it, the whole thing almost to his, who his mom. And I'm like, how old is this kid supposed to be? <laughs> that kid, the kid, that kid was fascinating actually. I'm sure we'll get into that. But yeah, that, I, as soon as I saw I was like, this kid is way, this is like a Disney Channel kid now. Like he, <laughs> I, I feel like this kid's ahead of his time with, uh, I mean, the actor himself was really pretty good. Yeah, he's like, he's like the best part of the film, I think. His, he, no, he the is. the I mean, acting of that kid was pretty solid. Yeah, he, I, he was the best actor of the movie, 100%. <laughs> like, Better I mean, than, other than, than the men? Rat, the rats were pretty good. <laughs> they were pretty good, too. You got to give it to the rats. So about a year and a half ago on the podcast, we talked about Willard. It was one of the first 71 releases we talked about because it came out. It was like it was like a weird release where it came out sporadically throughout the country over the course of a few months. But its first screening, I want to say, was February 71. So we did an episode in February of 2021. And I had heard of that movie and watching it was an interesting experience. (laughs) I didn't know until researching that movie that there was a sequel. So you said you, before watching Ben for this, you watched Willard. What did you think of Willard? Yeah, so I, want, I definitely want to watch Willard because I knew, well, I knew with a sequel, I was like, well, I want to make sure I understand um, <laughs> plot for this one. I'm sure it's going to be very directly related, especially if like yeah. this rat was a main part of the first one. Mm-hmm. But, but like I had the remake of Willard I had seen as a kid. I okay. barely remember it. Um, it stars that actor who is creepy looking. I yeah, Cr- Crispin name. Glover. Crispin Glover. Yes, him. And so, because uh, yeah, my sister was watching it, and I just remember there's a part where like someone and like I think his mother in the basement and like all these rats on her. I for, maybe changed some stuff. That's what my memory was. So I was like, oh, I remember this movie about rats, and I remember. <laughs> um, so my family, we had. 14 rats at one time we in your house in our house I mean pets they were not like they were like you, you know, had pet ones. rats they were pet rats we had pet rats at our house huh um so my sister loves rats and i did too like, rats are, i'm allergic to them unfortunately but they are wonderful wonderful pets and she had she began off with one and then she got two uh they were brothers um and then she got a uh a third one they were mo curly larry which is a so creative um and then uh, my sister got a female, and she bred Mo and the female, <laughs> who was named Lola. Uh, and then they had some babies, and then the other brother, and those babies had babies. It was a little bit and stuff, I think. Um, and uh, and you were allergic. Up- I was allergic. I didn't only if I touched them. Not like it wasn't. Why would bad. they? Why would they bring rats into the house? So many if you were allergic. I did. I don't think I developed an allergy until afterwards. <laughs> oh, okay. I was I was not allergic before. Oh, okay. Uh, but then I later on in life, I think I developed allergies for them. Um, <laughs> but we and so we ended up having fourteen rats in yeah. like multiple cages. We had, I mean, like four foot cages. Mm. Um, now this is in my sister's room. No, I'm not in our house. My, my parents were like, "You want these animals? Keep them in your room. That's it." Um, but rats are wonderful animals they're so sweet and they're very like they it, it makes sense for the movie that like 
the bond between a boy and also Willard in the original, like mm-hmm. between a rat, it kind of makes sense because rats are very affectionate, sweet uh, pets and animals. Mm-hmm. And um, like that kind of clicks. Um, so like, I think it's, I think it would be funny watching this movie from the perspective of someone who does not like rats if I'm disgusting. Because I'm watching this, I'm just like, it's a rat, like who cares? But if yeah. someone hates rats, they get a completely different perspective at least uh, of Ben and of Willard. Um, so like I was watching, I was just like, they kind of seem kind of sweet. Like, <laughs> who cares? Like, you you didn't do. want you didn't want the rats destroyed. Not necessarily yeah, just capture them, let them go. I mean, I think Ben needed to die. Um, but Ben needed to die. <laughs> I think Ben. I, I think he he was controlling. He was psycho. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, he's a rat. <laughs> but uh, he's psycho. Um, but the other oh. ones, I'm like they're, they're just playing along. So your take on Willard was like 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 Willard is a very different kind of movie than Ben. Watching Ben it last was, night, yeah. Willard is like a quiet drama for about seventy percent of the movie, and then. Yeah. Because I remember my guest for that, Jordan Downey, who's a big horror guy. I was like, I want to get you on for a horror film. And I found Willard. And it was, I believe, the 10th highest grossing film of 71. It was very popular. And it was a horror film about rats. I was like, oh, this is perfect. And I'm like 70% end of Willard. I'm like, my guest is going to hate me. This isn't really a horror film. It's really more of like a character study of this guy, of this kind of quirky, weird guy. And then at the end, after that scene where like that, there's a there's a death scene, what? 70% of the way in mm-hmm. then it turns a little bit more into a to a horror film but yeah. I felt like Ben was more of a work of terror than Willard was yeah there were a lot more <laughs> well uh it, well you know it's the rules of the sequel you gotta be you gotta like amp up amp, amp it up and you gotta make it more dramatic more people gotta die more people gotta uh have like dramatic deaths uh, <laughs> that's what they did they brought it they brought it yeah so, so which one do you like more, the the original or the sequel? Which, which one? I mean, they're different, you know but like, which one were you kind of leaning toward? <sighs> okay, Willard, I didn't like. It, it, Willard is annoying. He was a. <laughs> I couldn't stand him. I couldn't stand the guy. He was just. He was whiny, and it was like me, 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 and it's like, you know, I'm not kind of. I was like, I was like, stop. I was like, <laughs> just stop this. Uh, <laughs> but I did, I, I like the progression more. I liked seeing the progression of the relationship with he and the rat. And they, right. Uh, mm-hmm. And the see was, uh, what's the, the white rat's name? Um, in Willard? Yes. It was, it was like the name of God. Um, Zeus. Oh <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. I just not, remember Ben. Not, it's something like Atticus, not Atticus. Um, Atticus. Atticus something yeah that rat was super cute but the white rat the white rat is the one who dies 70 yes, percent of the way in right yeah, yeah. Yes. like they like like they destroy the white rat yeah, and it's all bloody and everything down. um yeah. yeah so the, that uh yeah i like seeing the development of him and like progressing i just i think i was a little more invested in willard mm-hmm. um but i think the kid i was so surprised by uh, the kid Danny because he was just so good. I was like, this kid's like really yeah. a talented actor, and um, like the weird quirkiness of like his puppet shows and his um, and his music that he makes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his weird was, puppet show, like he has he, a full like, on display in his bedroom. Yeah, I think I think they're like they're both lonely people. Like Willard's lonely, and uh, Danny is lonely. I think for different reasons. I think Danny like. His, his mom they both have mommy issues for sure oh yeah um maybe we'll more so <laughs> oh my god oh yeah uh but yeah i think <sighs> something interesting i found between the films oh. was that willard felt like it was like a child in a man's body yes and then in ben it was like a man in a child's body <laughs> like danny you know felt older the- than Danny felt much older than he really was. And then Willard always felt like he, he, he was like a 14 year old and he's in this man's body and he doesn't know how to, you know, interact with other people. <laughs> that is, yes, that is, I think the proper way to put it. And maybe it's because Ben had a lot more, like his, uh, he had a heart condition um, and maybe he just kind of grow up faster. So he kind of like, 
I feel like he kind of maybe made the best of his situation overall. You mean Danny? Danny, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said Ben. I'm like, I don't think, I oh, think God. Ben, Ben, Not, Ben, Ben I mean, has, Ben has issues. Yeah, Ben has issues, but he but, did make the best of his situation. Uh, but yeah, Danny made the best of his situation. Yeah. We think. get a scar, we get that long scar on his chest. Oh, yeah, the long, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, and then like, he can't run very much. And um, so remember when the, when, the, when the movie started, they're like, we got to go two blocks. Like, that's far for you. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's dramatic. And then I was like, oh, he has a heart condition. That makes sense. Um, yeah. So we'll get into yeah, more. Think, yeah. Perfect way to put it. We'll get into more of the movie. Let me just go over. For those of you who have not seen Ben, maybe you're familiar with Willard and kind of want to know a little bit about the sequel. So the sequel follows a, lo- a lonely boy of like six ish years old. I couldn't really quite tell. Uh, his name is Danny Garrison, played by Lee Montgomery. And kind of the lead role of this movie he's kind of like this movie's willard character mm-hmm. uh, he befriends willard's former pet rat ben ben becomes the boy's best friend protecting him from bullies and keeping his spirits up in the face of a heart condition however ben forms an army of deadly rodents while the police in the town <laughs> attempt to control it so there is like two stories going on in this there's like so w- willard there's not really the sense of like rats are taking over the town. It's kind of like quieter. And mm-hmm. now after, you know, spoiler alert, we always give away spoilers here. Uh, Willer dies at the end of the first movie and the rats are kind of overtaking the town and like police at the beginning of, of Ben, the sequel, they actually find like the dead body of Willard and recognize that there's like an infestation in our town of these rats and they can kill and in the early part of the movie, we get one, if not two, more death scenes of Ben. Like we yeah. get a, a, of the movie Ben, we get a couple more uh, humans who die. So this, like the second half of the sequel, it's like they're just like trying to find and destroy these rats. So there's those scenes, and then you get lots of quieter scenes with Danny, and he's just befriending the rat and going about his life. And so it's kind of an interesting parallel between the two narratives and the sequel. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely felt like a part two. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it it honestly made me think of Insidious Chapter Two because it, it, it felt very. It had oh, the connected. exact same for like yeah, it was it was just like it took off right where they left off, and then they don't they they there's no uh, slow progression to stuff really. They just start and they're like okay. We'll show you because the intro of Ben was after the last like five or so minutes. Yeah, before. it opened like Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. It yeah. opened like a lot of horror sequels did in the definitely the eighties. Sometimes uh, Halloween Two of, from the same year eighty one mm-hmm. would open with the last few minutes of the first movie, and that's what we get at the beginning of Ben. Like we get over the opening credits at least what three or four minutes of the ending of Willard. Yeah, and I thought that was interesting. That's something we see in some sequels in the eighties. Yeah, because they they definitely don't do that anymore. I think they just yeah. kind of expect people to remember stuff now. I guess if if Scream I mean, Five, if Scream Five had opened with the last ten minutes of Scream Four, you wouldn't have liked that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> We're like, we know this. The real fans know. Come I on. think now you're expected to be, you know, up to date. Well, it's also because, I think it's also because I think it could be part of you because everyone had more so access to watch these movies again or multiple times because back in the, i guess in the 70s right you gotta have a tv you gotta have do they have, do they even have so back then? yeah i mean vhs didn't really start i would say until the early 80s and i want to say okay. it didn't get popular until the mid 80s so you go see you see halloween in 1978 the movie leaves theaters and then three years later two and a half years later whatever you go see the sequel you might not have seen the original because it wasn't necessarily readily available at for home viewing so this might be the first time in three years two and a half years you've thought about it so it makes sense in 81 like you'd open with the ending just to be like oh right especially if it's one like ben is where it kind of starts off right where the last one ended mm-hmm. if you are like a scream five and it's like 10 11 years later it would it would make no sense to let's show the ending of the previous one it, it kind of makes sense if it's like it and if the if the sequel is starting off right where the last one ended and it's been a few years that's where it makes sense to me but usually yeah. it, it feels kind of cheap though it's like especially when the movie's 90 that's minutes true. it's 90 minutes long and then it's like oh the first seven minutes is just the ending of the previous movie it just feels sometimes it feels cheap to me it definitely does in friday the 13th part two. Oh yeah i i, <laughs> I, I just finished willard and i was like i'm gonna watch ben now 
And I just like, oh, I'm going to fast forward. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to skip the first five minutes. And I was like, okay, you got an hour and 25 minutes left. This is great. And speaking uh, of Crispin Glover, it kind of, it, it made me think of Back to the Future Part 2, where oh, he refused cool. to be in the sequel and they use pieces of him from the original Back to the Future anyway. And Crispin Glover sued, and I believe he won. And like oh. they reinstated in 1989 ish, somewhere around there, like a rule that you can't use an actor in the sequel if they don't give you permission to do so. And I'm watching the opening of Ben. I'm like, did uh, Bruce Davidson give his permission to use his likeness in the beginning of the sequel? I'd be curious. Oh, yeah. Probably. They probably didn't say a word to him. They probably just were like, okay, we're going to open with the ending of the last movie. I, I can't imagine in 72, it was something that actors were thinking about, but that's yeah. something that Chris McGlover, the star of the Willard remake from 03, he kind of jump started that whole thing. Like you can't just use, if they were in a previous movie in the franchise, you can't just use their likeness in any sequel that you want. You have to get their permission. No, absolutely. That makes complete sense. And I, I didn't know that he didn't want to be in uh, Back to the Future Part 2. Oh, have you heard? There, there's, st there's, yeah, go on YouTube, search oh, Crispin awesome. Glover, Back to the Future 2. There are, there are crazy stories. Like, he wanted, fr from what I remember hearing or reading, like, Crispin Glover wanted, he, he would have done the sequel, but he wanted as much money as Michael J. Fox was getting for the sequel. And they were like, you're not the star of this. He's the star. You're just going to be in a part of it. So he refused to be in Part 2, and they had to... Bob Gale and Zemeckis, like they had to completely rewrite the script. And that's why when you watch Back to the Future 2 and 3, you don't really see his, uh, Marty's dad. You don't see him that much because uh -huh. they had to write him out. It would have been a completely different sequel, I think, if Chris McGlover had signed on. It would have been a different wow. Yeah. Um, that's, that's fair. I, mean, I never knew this. I'm gonna, <laughs> I really want to watch these again now. Yeah, back, know, back, the the, back to the Future is one of my favorite films. And uh, they had a, there was a three disc, there was a, there was a, trilogy dvd set and that had commentaries and q and a's and they went into that a lot like talking about i mean first there's the interesting story about eric stoltz who was originally playing marty mcfly and they shot like 50 percent or more of the movie with eric stoltz in the lead role and then robert zemeckis went to steven spielberg and was like i don't the movie's not working it's not funny like this guy's not working we need michael j fox for this so this movie is not going to do well and Michael J. Fox, they, they, he was on Family Ties and yeah. they, got, they got him to shoot Family Ties during the day. And then he shoot Back to the Future all night. And he was like for weeks, like not sleeping at all, like maybe an hour a night doing uh, both jobs because they were just like, this movie only works for whatever reason. They were like, it has to be Michael J. Fox. And they were right. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I adore Michael J. Fox. My also Michael J. Fox to me has like the best voice of like I love his voice. Yeah. I love his voice all day. But so there was that whole that 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 struggle kind of on the first movie, and then the second movie, this was the struggle, Chris McGlover not agreeing to be in it unless they paid him an extraordinary amount of money, which they refused to which makes sense because he wasn't the star of the movie. Sense, yeah. uh, but then that goes back to Ben. It opens with, it's, they didn't, there's nothing new there. It's just footage from Willard. A year later, this movie came out about a year later, a little over a year. And I was just curious watching it. I'd love to know. I was looking in my notes and the research. I was like, is there anything about, like does Bruce Davison get, get royalties for being in Ben? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would want, I would want some. <laughs> <laughs> but we get the well, opening and that's, it, and that's why it made me think of in yeah, insidious chapter two that it starts right it starts off where it goes back to the moment where patrick wilson's character is like killing elise in it and then they, yeah. they show that for in uh yeah and it, it's it, yeah, not many movies do that anymore they just where they yeah they do a little playback and um but uh sometimes you go back to the if you if you have a low budget and you you finish your sequel and the movie comes in at 70 minutes long it's too short just you, reuse footage from the previous movie that's what Wes Craven did for the hills have eyes part two in 1985 the movie came in short and so he had a couple flashback scenes <laughs> from the original hills have eyes <laughs> including <laughs> one flashback scene from the mind of a dog Andrew, oh, God. I, I the camera the camera zooms in on a dog and then it and it dissolves into a flashback scene from the original movie. 
I've never, I, I've never seen a sequel to that movie. Oh, it's it's uh, garbage. Probably the worst film that Wes Craven ever made was The Hills Have Eyes 2 from 85. It's a movie he was on record of saying he only did it for the money because he was broke. I believe he filmed that before he made Nightmare on Elm Street, which came out at the uh-huh. end of 84. I think it was at a point, because he it took him three years to get uh, Nightmare on Elm Street greenlit, like to make it. And during that time, he, he was totally broke. So I think he made the sequel to Hills of Eyes just to get, put some cash in his bank account. I think that's the only yeah. reason he did it. And then shortly thereafter, he finally got the green light from New Line Cinema to make Nightmare on Elm Street. Makes sense. If we're talking about a horror film on Film of 50, just so you, the listeners know, we will eventually talk about Wes Craven because that yeah, happens every time. <laughs> oh, it, 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 I always it, find it, a link. <laughs> there's always a link. <laughs> I had one comment once on the YouTube channel, Film of 50. A guy said, I, <laughs> someone commented like, does every episode of this podcast at some point discuss Wes Craven and Scream? The answer is yes. I mean, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I know we're going to talk about Kirby being back in Scream for us. So I'm, not, I'm already. Uh, when you, when you Here's the one thing I'm going to say about that, Andrew. I'm like, how cool would it have been to have that? How to have that have been a surprise while watching the damn movie? I don't need to know a year in advance that she's in it. Like, make give make, give that as a surprise while I'm watching it. I, th- I think I feel like they're need- <laughs> I like they're doing it to bring fans back. So like, hey guys, we listen. We're here's your character back. You got her. But it would have it would have been an amazing surprise for the fifth one or yeah, in the fifth one. I uh, wanted they- her- I wanted her to be revealed as one of the two killers at the end of the fifth one. I was like, give me Hayden Panettiere. That would have been awesome. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Nev Nev Campbell. I I don't ask those filmmakers of anything. Just give me more Nev in the in the sixth one. Yeah. Well, you know, and Courtney Cox commented, I think yesterday, the day before, that um, she has read the script and she says it's really good. She's like, I, she's like, it, it was a good script. So what she's gonna say? She's gonna say, I oh, didn't exactly, like it. I uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, well, I mean, because I mean, uh, that's like the breaker for like, if it's not a good script, I won't do it. Uh, yeah. But she says it is good. So maybe some people think that she is gonna be, you know, whether it's gonna be back. Hopefully. What I, I what I love is that every sequel since like the third one the last actor we always hear about is is Nev Campbell like we Courtney Cox and like before uh you know David Arquette would sign on right away and then there'd be like the six month waiting period (laughs) you wouldn't hear until like a week before shooting Nev has signed on so we'll see you want biggest pet peeve with with that not like from the actors because they don't have how you want um I hate when the fans are like what else is she doing like what like what like like she's in a brand new career. series that just premiered called the lincoln lawyer on Netflix. exactly I, I, well she's also just like a lot of theater as well apparently. yeah um it drives me i hate when people say i'm just like or maybe they don't they, they care about these characters so much that they don't want to do another one because they don't want to ruin that character or that's the memory of Wes craven like they don't want to uh like they can just not want to do it and please they have plenty of money Courtney cox is plumbing they have they're loaded they're they're set for life probably uh, well, we're at a point in the franchise now. I mean, Nev Campbell was kind of a cameo in five, and it was kind of just like a wink at the audience, like, here I am. And it's like, if they're going to bring her back again for six, you got to give me something else. It can't just be another 10 to 15 minute cameo at the end. Like, yeah, what, what, why bother? We're just going to do this forever. We're just going to do another five of these, and it's just going to, she'll show up at the end for a few minutes. Like, that's like, we got to make it more about her life now or. Just I I would even say just don't like she shouldn't even be in it. Like if it's gonna I be agree. another 10 minute cameo, don't even bother. <laughs> I agree. I think it's either you don't have her at all or make or her a big part of it. And at least half the movie. Um, because uh, yeah, she was like maybe like what 20 minutes. But she, you know, Sydney's been through a lot, Andrew. She's been through a lot. Like we gotta put we're gonna put put her through the ringer again a year exactly. after five. Let her rest. Let her rest. <laughs> like I feel like Gabe. One thing I want, I want Gail Weathers to get a phone call. That is all I want. Gail, get a phone call. Yeah, I think she should get a phone call (laughs) while on air of her talk show. That would be the best. So we're at, we're at, uh, we're coming up on Scream 6 in 2023. Are you sad that the Willard franchise ended with Ben movie two? I mean, (laughs) I'm okay with that. I don't think I would watch the third one. You wouldn't um, watch the third one? What would you call remember, the third one? I don't even Rats. know what it would go. <laughs> it would probably be Danny and Ben. 
So uh, here, here's a piece of trivia I found. It said about Ben, it said, according to studio publicity notes, uh, Mo DeSesso, who trained the 500 rats used in Willard, wow. he trained approximately 4,000 rats for Ben. The film's press book says that there was going to be a second sequel featuring 10,000 trained rats in the film released in 1973, but that third film was never made. Well, <laughs> that would be a lot of there'd be a lot of rats, first of all. <laughs> 4,000 uh, rats. There was not, it did not seem like it was that much. No, it did not. I mean, I mean rats live long enough you can make a sequel. Because I know like in like in like one of my donations, yeah, they gotta have multiple dogs because the dogs grow up so fast. Huh. You gotta you gotta have multiple of them. But like with rats, like they they'll last, they're the same size <laughs> from like six months on. Like, why is it? And like they didn't really have any too many like wide shots of like all they always had a lot of close-ups where you just see like a you know like 30 or so all huddled up and then it's like different shots of it. So it looks like it's tons and tons, but it's really not yeah. that many just movie magic. Uh <laughs> like I don't know what I don't know what the point of having four thousand. You yeah, ten thousand would be in the third one. Yeah, the ten thousand. No. So I guess so I guess there was at some point there was talk of there being a third one. I wonder I could not find like a statistic of how well Ben did like in terms of box office. I'm assuming it just did not do nearly as well as Willard and so they probably just pulled the plug after that. Well, my mom Did knew you find about- any? Okay. Uh so I'll tell my mom yeah, I'm doing a, a podcast next uh tomorrow about uh, <laughs> movie Willard. Oh yeah, we're going to throw out. Oh yeah, we're doing a and my mom was like, oh, yeah, uh, Michael Jackson has a song in that movie. It's like, well, she's well, the sequel. And I was like, you know about Ben? I was like, oh, wow. Uh, I mean, she loves, she, my mom loves horror movies, but she remembered Ben uh, because she remembered Michael Jackson having a song in it. Right. Um, which I feel like maybe that's just the, the way some people remember it now. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm trying to see how much money it made, but. I mean, I don't think it did as well as the first one. It probably did okay. I feel like if it was a complete bomb, it wouldn't have qualified for an Academy Award nomination. I feel like it had to do, had to do okay to at least it, 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 in the following spring, like be thought of, you know, for an Oscar nomination. Yeah, I mean, not, I mean, it's not like you know today where movies are coming out, you know, every every single day. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I, I was like, what? Like, what is the modern day equivalent of this? Like, imagine like. Scream Five had a great end credit song and it got an Oscar nomination. Like you, the, that does not happen now. Mm-hmm. No. Like a horror sequel, a horror sequel being nominated for an Oscar for anything today would be like unheard of, unless it yeah, was like just would. unless it was just incredible filmmaking. It was like yeah. a, a different kind of thing. You know, if they made <laughs> the, if they made a if they made a sequel to Get Out and it was better than the original. Like maybe that could get in, but. You know, for the most part. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, and that one, that one best virtual screenplay, right? Yeah, that was one of the coolest wins of the decade. Was Jordan Peele getting best original screenplay Academy Award for Get Out, a horror film? That was cool. That was pretty cool. But one thing, I'm, uh, it looks like a Ben came out on my birthday. So Ben came out on your birthday. Yeah, June twenty third. June twenty third. Not on your birthday because you weren't born yet. Yes, but on I the mean, day I, June twenty. I would be a very young. <laughs> You would look very good for your age if you were how, around how in 1973. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, how old would I be? And I was like, I would be 15. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so it came out in June. So I feel like as a late June release, a, a sequel to Willard, which was the 10th highest grossing movie somewhere around there of 71, that this would have done fairly well, at least in the first couple weekends. Yeah. Uh, I would be surprised if, I mean, I wondered like, having the movie called Ben and not Willard 2 or something, did that hurt the box office possibly? You know? I can see that. Yeah, because I mean... Ben's like, very just generic. Yeah, Ben's a little <laughs> generic. I think, like, if, if I heard movie Ben, I would never, ever think it was Willard 2. Yeah, I mean, imagine you're in the summer of 72 and your friend or your a sibling comes in and says, hey, you want to go see Ben on Friday? You'd be like, what? <laughs> 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 yeah that would be that I, I definitely think that could hurt yeah because i it's like that thing like you don't have all the you know the uh the media where you where you see 
a multiple like advertisement of it and you know uh like movie previews of it to know that ben is that ben rat from willard like yeah that makes no sense but it can't be called willard too that wouldn't make sense i, know, he'd be, I, I remember telling unless, my guests yeah go ahead unless they changed it a little bit what if willard survived that'd be kind of interesting did we is he dead dead at the end of the first one i feel like yeah, he's he was like dead. he was dead dead he was dead dead but yeah, i feel like you up. in horror films you can they covered him up at the end of willard yes when they, when they, when they, when they, i thought he was like just kind of slumping over with the rats on him dying and then it, like the camera zooms in on ben wasn't that how it ended well wait, i'm sorry and, and and ben they uh they they, they show at the of- beginning yeah, and then, and then they covered him up with, and they put him like in a yeah. body. Yeah, but that wasn't in Willer. That was in the beginning of Ben. Yeah, that was in the beginning of Ben. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. No, I'm, I know. I'm saying like he was dying, potentially was dying, dead, yeah. but I don't think we see him. Do we see him still like just like eyes open, like dead, dead at the end of Will? I no, don't think we do. Like, I think there was a little bit of wiggle room there. Yeah, I think, I think they, they could have brought him back. <laughs> I mean, I'll say it would have paid for the actor for him, but. Um, Bruce Davidson, who would go on to have, and he's still working today, great career. He got an Oscar nomination for Longtime Companion in 1991, and he's in the X Men, the original X Men trilogy, uh, and he's done some great work. I don't know if how in demand he was in '72 to say, yeah. "I'm not going to be in the sequel." But I think back then, if a character died, they didn't necessarily think of ways to resurrect. It was like, okay, let's just move on and tell a different story. And I don't know what else there was to do with the character Willard in the second one. It wouldn't have been that interesting. It made sense to go to a new human protagonist. Yeah. And, and well, and the, pro- to pro- the protagonist was, he was good. And so, like, I, w- I was invested in him a little bit. Like, it, he was... You, know, <laughs> you were rooting it, for little Danny? Well, I think, I think it, for me, it has made more sense for a kid to have this relationship with the rats. But then, but then the thing that makes Willard more a little more interesting because like well yeah he has a like you said he has a mindset of a child and that does add just add a little more um interest i don't know yeah, yeah it's yeah willard he passed the torch and kid did good. so what what one other reason that there might not have been a, a third film is that so the original movie willard was based on a novel called rat man's notebooks by stephen gilbert oh. And the sequel, Ben, only uses the character of Ben uh, in, in the story. It, the screenwriter, Gilbert Ralston, who wrote the original and Ben, he came up with a brand new story and script uh, for the sequel. So there was not like, if, if there had been a trilogy of books, like maybe like they could have more easily made a sequel and a second sequel. But I think because there was just the one novel, like maybe that made it more difficult to yeah. create additional stories. I mean, what's the third one going to be? The rats take over the world? I mean, I mean, they were in Los Angeles. I found out how hilarious they were in Los Angeles as well. They were mentioning like, all these streets. And I saw like places, like, I was like, I recognize this area. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, they took over the house and they went to the suburbs. So I guess it would, I think it would be all of Los Angeles would be hilarious. Right. Um, I would love like to be like a Hollywood, well, they did like a whole a, a scream thing where they made a movie about this and then the rats actually were still underground and they all took over the the movie premiere that became fun um, the third one's about the making of the third movie yeah <laughs> scream three that's, yeah it, it would be yeah let's make a movie about this and then bruce davidson comes back and, that, that would be really that would be a fun sequel bruce davidson comes back and plays himself yeah and then, of course, the other piece of trivia about Ben we have to talk about is everything to do with Michael Jackson and the Academy Award nomination for Ben's song. So the film's theme song is performed by Lee Montgomery, who plays Danny. Uh, was that like halfway through the movie? And then it's sung by a young Michael Jackson at the very end, like over like the last brief scene and then the end credits. Uh, so Jackson's recording of the song became a number one pop hit single. Uh, later included on the title track on Jackson's second solo album. Uh, ben, the song Ben song won a Golden Globe Award for Best Original Song, and it was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song at the 1973 ceremony. It lost to the song The Morning After from The Poseidon Adventure. 
but since it won at the Golden Globes, we could you could argue that Ben's song came close to winning an Oscar. Like Ben could have been a Ben could have been an Oscar winning movie. What would we have thought of that? Well, the first thing I'm gonna think of. First thing I could think of was how uh, the Gr- how the Grinch stole Christmas that Jim Carrey won best. Uh, I think the hair and makeup and stuff, uh, which I adore that movie with every ounce of my being. Uh, but I know that like critics don't like that movie. And it's not mm. a very. It's not. A, it, it has a bad rating on Tomatoes. Whatever. Uh, but must like even like I was like even these like not good movies, even though it's fantastic. Uh, they still like they can still potentially win an award. I think I always find that interesting when a movie like that like wins something. Mm-hmm. There was another movie really recently that won, or at least was nominated, and it was just like, I think it was like Angry Birds movie got nominated for like something. Oh, every <laughs> year, every year there's at least one oh, really something. terrible movie that gets in for a random technical nomination, and yeah. you're like, what? <laughs> like, like, you really win this? It's just, uh, it, but it has nothing to do with the quality of the movie. It's just mm-hmm. if the, if if a bad movie has a great song in it, then it makes sense that that might get nominated. It doesn't have to be in a great film, especially yeah. for song. I think okay. there's a, I think there's a, there's like a late seventies movie. I always would see the statistic of like the worst movie to ever win an Oscar, and it was like a late seventies disco movie, and it won best original song. And every review of the movie is like, this is one of the worst movies of the year. But we have to now call it an Oscar winner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it happened. But uh, but it, it got close, but it didn't win. But this song, and it was funny watching this. I'm like, I wonder if I've heard this song. If it got nominated for an Oscar and it's sung by Michael Jackson, maybe I have. And I've totally heard this song before. Like, I knew all oh, the yeah. words. I was like, I've heard this song going back to when I was like a teenager Never did I know until today that it was in a, a 1972 horror movie sequel. Well, that's like when I told my mom, I was like, oh, when I, like about seeing the movie, he's like, oh, it has the song from Michael Jackson in it. I'm like, oh my God. I was like, people do know about this thing. Uh, I, yeah. I have not heard it before. I've not you heard, heard it before. I mean, maybe, maybe long ago I did, but uh, it's a pretty song, though. I mean, it's, it's a good song. It's a song I've heard before and that I knew like most of the words and I'm like, it's about a rat. This song is about a rat. (laughs) About a rat that is terrorizing Los Angeles and is controlling all his rat friends. Yeah, but just like a song about friendship and Ben is a very generic name. And you, you you know, when you're younger, you you would just assume that's like a person. Like you wouldn't think, oh, that's clearly a rat he's singing about. I don't think there's, is there a line in the song where you're like, oh, that's about a rodent. (laughs) I don't think So a live recorded version was released on the album, The Jacksons Live in 1981. And this is where I think I heard this song. It was released on Michael Jackson's album, Number Ones, an album released in 2003. That was the year I graduated high school. I think I had that album at the time and I must've heard it on that. Uh, Crispin Glover recorded a version of this song for the soundtrack of the 2003 remake. There's apparently a music video that Glover appears in <laughs> of this oh song. <laughs> Crispin Glover singing Ben's song. I want to hear that. I I will I will be watching that. <laughs> I, I, I sort of want to watch the uh, the remake because of watching I've never the seen the remake. Now I I, sh- I should know. I think it was very dark. <laughs> I, I I barely I just remember certain little aspects of it, but uh, I I definitely want to watch it again. Just just uh, you know see what they change and if, if the if the remake's any better yeah so i just i just that's such a weird statistic about this movie having a song that would go on to be so popular and get oscar nominated it's not something you see every day like this no. is very strange <laughs> and no. for it to be michael jackson singing at the end you know this oh, is you before, know what? this is before he's like michael jackson this is 72 well, when, so when when I started hearing this song, I thought, I man, I thought it was a, a girl singing it. Because <laughs> it does. And so I did it quickly. So if, if I did not know that it was Michael Jackson, I probably wouldn't even know it was actually him. Like I yeah. wouldn't be able to pick it out right away. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> well, I feel like it's, like it's so popular, and now I'm thinking of uh, we don't talk about Bruno. He's playing at the bars now. Like I, I was at a restaurant, and we don't talk about Bruno was playing on the on the speaker, and I was like. 
I was like, Encanto was playing in this bar? I think it was bizarre. Yeah, that song's fine. I don't need to hear it at the bar. No, I don't. <laughs> I was like, why? Like, did you watch the Oscars? Like, they play, they did a whole number to the Bruno song, and it wasn't even nominated for Best Original nominated. Song. A different song from the movie was nominated. I'm like, why is this? Yeah. Why are they doing a number for the movie that's not for the? Why are they doing a number for the song that's not nominated? Was there yeah, song? they did that, but they couldn't invite uh, Rachel. Is it Menzel from? Uh, uh West Side Story. Oh, Rachel Zegler. Zegler. They yes. did get they, they she did go eventually. eventually she did go. Yes. But she was also like I was like, y'all, like you can't invite her originally, but you can get this whole musical number for a movie that didn't even get or, that sorry, was kind of movie. that whole uh, thing was kind of weird because I read was, later on that it wasn't that they weren't inviting her, it's that she was shooting something and she was uh, supposed to be working that day. And then so I think there was something weird there. I think she was always going to go. It was just like I don't know. <laughs> it sounded it like they weren't inviting her. And I'm like, she's the star of a movie nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. You need to invite them. <laughs> yeah. It was silly. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So, anyway. but no, I really did like this song and I'm, and I, and I'm happy, you know, it's in the legacy of the Willard franchise. It's nice. Uh, the last piece of trivia here was just the reviews. The critics actually were pretty kind to the movie, including. Yeah. Gene Siskel of Chicago Tribune like famously hated horror films. Like once in a blue moon, he'd give a positive, a thumbs up to a horror film. He gave this movie three and a half stars out of four and said, Ben goes beyond mere thrills into the realm of solid drama because of the superb performance of Lee Montgomery. Like that's strange to me that Gene Siskel would have been positive about this. But then Roger Ebert, (laughs) Roger Ebert, who I always you know, who always enjoyed more, and I, I really love his writing, he gave Ben one and a half stars out of four and said, this is not a thriller, but a geek movie. Which he, <laughs> he, he referred to ge- geek movies were like, he would say like the, the subpar version of a horror film or a thriller where it's just about shocking you and gore and it's not really doing anything of interest with the genre. I wouldn't go so far as to say that's Ben because there's not no. really gore at all in the movie. No, I mean, it was, uh, no, definitely not. That's more like early 2000s stuff. Yeah. So I'm somewhere in between. Like for me, like as we'll get into, let's finally talk about our thoughts about Ben. Like for me, I'm like right in the middle there. I'm like a two and a half out of four. There were some scenes I enjoyed. I actually thought the best part of the film was like the opening 30 minutes. I thought the problem with Willard is that it takes a long time to get going. And it's like an hour of just like character. And I'm like, some of this is interesting, but like, let's get, I mean, this is a horror film. Let's get to something. Uh, Let's get to some tension. And Ben opens with like, we get a kill scene right away. There's some good atmosphere. I was like, okay, now this movie, right. This movie's pushing its way into more of a horror film than the original and then we int- were introduced to Danny and he was, an, a, you know, a well-acted performance, good character. And then I felt after about 30, 40 minutes, the movie kind of just shifted into a kind of a quiet Willard-like trauma again. And there was a mm-hmm. long section where nothing was happening. And I was like, oh, here we go. There's not really a lot of tension here. I mean, these cops are trying to locate hundreds, thousands of rats. And I felt like more could have been done with that. Like more... Yeah excitement and then we get to the end of the movie and it's like 10 minutes of them just like spraying like fire over all the rats over and over and over and over and it's all clearly like animated rats over like the shots the live action shots of the fire like you can tell they're just like animating the like the rats and i'm like oh, yeah this does not look very good anyway no, and, and there are several shots where they had it. They had the scene reversed, the fire shot. So the flames <laughs> yeah. are like going over. I was like, I was like, what are you doing? I was like, this is like, you know, maybe like the rats are retreating, going back through this, played it in reverse. And I was like, oh come on. I was like, this is this is not like it, some on. some places felt to me more entertaining, more of a fun watch than Willard was. But yeah. Willard was also, I felt like it resonated more because you got to know those characters, the human characters much better. Yes. And the cast is better in the in the original. You have Bruce Davison, you had Edward uh, Ernest Borgnine, and you had Elsa Lancaster, Lanchester from uh, 
Bride of Frankenstein and Mary Poppins. And remember, she played the mom and Willard. And yes. Oh, thank you. She, she's I like a classic character actress from Bride of Frankenstein and Mary Poppins, and did she great. Played the, work. She played the uh, that one of the housekeepers, right? Yeah, at the beginning, yeah. she's like the nanny at the beginning, yes. and she's like, "I'm out of here." She like stomps off, and yes. Uh, so you don't get that in Ben. It's like the cast. I mean, it's a cast of actors I did not recognize at all. And as good as Lee Montgomery was in the lead role, I felt like I felt like you had to know the characters more in Willard that made the movie more resonant. Yes, and it was over than this one. I mean, Danny's almost kind of forgotten about in the last 20 minutes. And it's just the police and the fire guy that's going in there. Oh, and yeah. Destroy. And I don't like, I don't, I don't, I've never, and we've talked about this on Wake and Fright. I don't like movies where animals are put in peril of any kind. <laughs> yeah. And when it's like minute after minute after minute of all these rats screaming in the sewers and being eviscerated by fire, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> like, I'm good. I don't yeah. know. Like it just, I was like, I guess this is kind of where it has to go. But it was kind of like a, it was kind of like an up and down thing for me. There'd be segments where I'm like, I'm into this. This is cool. this is good. And then it would drag, and I'd be like, eh. And it's it's you know it's a quick ninety minutes. It's not going to hurt you at all. But yeah, it was very much of a, a mixed bag of a movie for me. What do you think? Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I, I very much agree because um, yeah, as good as Danny was, um, I wanted. I wanted more of the sister's life, right? I thought mm -hmm. she, I thought she has, a, she had an interesting perspective of like, you know, she, she wanted had a girl fast and help kind of help take care of her, uh, her brother, almost like as if she was her his mother, because mm -hmm. the mom doesn't seem very involved, and it's, yeah. you know, and um, it was uh, she definitely had a Laurie Strode, uh, Laurie Strode girl, girl vibe thing going, and. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the, even the mom talked about like you like you never get a chance to go out you know to do this and at first I thought they were gonna very much make her a bigger part I mean she mm. of course you know goes in the tunnel and everything but she, I felt like there were so many parts where like you wouldn't see her for a while and then she'd come back and mm -hmm. um yeah I wanted maybe a little more glimpse of her life because uh she was one she was like very much a hero in this because she does go and save her brother um from getting burned and all that stuff and yeah uh definitely want more of her i wanted i mean maybe more information about the mom as well and i mean maybe if if they had maybe like the father that you'd never meet mm. um mm. maybe the surgery all that stuff maybe that was too much for him to handle and i, I feel like we could have got a lot more background about the family than we did because willard we got a lot like you said like there was so much character yeah uh development and gets getting a lot of backstory and in this all we know is that danny had a heart condition he had surgery and now he's a little lonely doesn't really hang out because he just physically can't marry mm -hmm. much and i feel like there's a lot more they could have told about that um than what we were given it's sure. just hard i think when you have a protagonist that young like how much can you do like with yeah. the character like willard you could tell us kind of a life story of this guy he was in his 20s and he's trying to he has a job and a girl who's interested in him and blah 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 and you can you have a lot of little stories there like there's only so much you can do with a young prodigy who's talented at music writing and and the, the other problem is like i'm like they're not like like willard i always had the sense like they, like he could die at the end like he might die i never had the sense that danny when he's like climbing around those sewers i'm not i'm like they're not going to kill this boy yeah <laughs> so there's I'm not any tension there that would be, that would be I, I mean they could have that would have been a big surprise usually when the protagonist is like under age nine usually they make it oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and, usually well, I, mean, I was thinking maybe the sister was gonna bite it but she did not yeah yeah and there's no is there anyone like really close to danny who dies like a human no it was all just like random like i love i love i love officer, the random uh uh people who go in the did drink. you did you laugh at all with like so so they'd be like you know their eyes would go big and they'd look down and there'd be like six rats like coming up to their feet and then the next shot they'd be dying and they're throwing <laughs> and you, you see the rats being like thrown onto them oh oh several seems like and i'm they, like uh, you can't the, run um, away <laughs> it's, i was like guys these are like, and then one rat is on they're like oh my god they're, they're, they're everywhere there's millions of them yeah. I'm like, well, it didn't look like a millions of them. Like, yeah, like chill. 
people's it, it was people's overreactions were hilarious it could also just because like i said like i like rats and i grew up with them yeah i'm just comfortable with them but i it was it was comical just how crazy people were because I think more so in this one. And then Willard, it what it wasn't too over the top. People like would just no. freak out and just be like, "Ooh, gross!" And then, uh, you know, when there's tons in their house, yeah, they'll leave the house. It makes sense. But in this, yeah, it was like there stuff. wasn't there wasn't a scene of suspense with the rats like killing someone that really ever worked in the sequel. Like at the end of Willard, like he's kind of cornered in that attic. And Ben is there and he's like, Ben's instructing, you know, the other rats to kill. Will- so it kind of makes sense at the end of Willard. This yeah. one is just kind of random. It's just like, like the supermarket scene, which was kind of fun. I, lo- I love seeing like old movies and seeing like, what, what, what's on the cereal box? Like, oh, yeah, the and, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that, that guy driving that truck and he's like, he looks in the back seat and there's rats. He goes, oh my God. And then he hits another vehicle. And isn't there an explosion? <laughs> oh yeah, and, and then that person died too. I guess another another. I think that was part of the second. I'm like, I I would if I was driving down the road and I turned and there were 20 rats in my back seat, I would freak out too. I don't know if I would slam into a car two seconds later and have an explosion. Kill them in the process. <laughs> but yeah, just the the hysteria of this movie it's it's hilarious to me that they're going house to house and have you seen any rats and. Uh, what was the fun the funniest part in the whole movie was like there's a report like in the like in the newspaper they report that the leader of the rats is ben yep. <laughs> that and was he, a big laugh for me it was in that I was mean, in the that was in the article that they have named ben <laughs> as the leader oh, of the rats. Uh, or was it on the news station it was like in the no, news because they, they knew it was named ben. But now, how did they know that it was like did oh it was in the diary it was in it was in the diary it was in the diary the diary that magically came to to be yeah I was, I was like how did they know it was named Ben and my question like did like Danny did he have did he like learn his name like telepathically or did he like yeah how does Danny know his name's Ben did he just it, and they question that in the movie they're like how do you know his name was Ben and he's just <laughs> like I don't know Ben just he seems just... like a good name. And I was like, wait, is this like a weird, like, because before, you know, with Willard, it was very much so like Willard was imagining the conversation because he mm. just needed someone. But in Ben, I was like, how does he know his name is Ben? Yeah. And um, like, is this now a weird, almost like a supernatural element? Because mm. like, how would, how would Danny know these things? Um, <laughs> it, hey, Side of, it reminds me of the movie uh Ferdinand you know, that cartoon oh movie. yeah yeah Ferdinand from a few years ago John Cena because in the movie it's a runaway bull named Ferdinand and somehow the girl knows the bull's name is Ferdinand and I was watching it and I was like wait I was like how did uh, how did she know how how like, did, you have to explain you know? this to audience like it like they just she the girl just finds the bull and she's like all of a sudden calling him Ferdinand. And I'm like, wait, how did how does she know this bull's name is Ferdinand? She <laughs> found him. But that is his name. And of course it's a kid's movie that has all this ridiculous stuff. But that was the one thing like that, that's not realistic. Come on. That makes Maybe. no sense. And it, it reminded that the whole Ben thing reminded me of Ferdinand. I was like, oh my God. Come on. Maybe Ben the rat should have talked and then we could have made that clearer. That, I mean, that was, that was looked up first. at Danny and went, I'm Ben. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like wrote it down somehow. So it was a, he gets a that pencil. Movie and like, is the talking. <laughs> I, also, I also thought with having the protagonist be this little boy, I've looked at a few 70s Disney films for the podcast. And there were sections of this movie where there wasn't any terror. And it was just like Danny singing. And, and I'm like, there, there's like 50, 60% of this movie that you could just it could have just been a disney theatrical film from 70s yeah, absolutely <laughs> like it has a feeling a look a, like the cinematography like the look of the movie it was very times, bright, i was yeah. like this could be a disney movie <laughs> like you know you could i'm sure you could cut it in a way to make it look like it for yeah. sure like i bet i bet they could have, it's 94 movie. minutes it's 94 minutes long i bet there's an 80 to 84 minute cut of this movie you could do and release it as a G-rated Disney movie from 72. Yeah. <laughs> like just cut out a few of the attack scenes and it's 
G-rated Disney. Oh yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I mean, we we both we love the more intense kind of terror and stuff. And I'm like, so Willard was kind of slow and tame, and until the very end, wasn't really even a horror film at all. And when Ben starts with that murder scene in the first ten minutes, I'm like, after Willard's death, like we get another. Was it a police officer who goes and investigates? He dies, right? Mm-hmm. He, like yeah, he, he opens up the thing behind the wall. The, yeah, the behind the wall. He dies. Um, so I'm like, okay, this dies. movie's gonna lean into being a horror film. It's gonna be like the rats take over the city, and we're gonna get yeah. lots of death scenes. It's gonna be really, you know, intense. And maybe towards the end, it gets really, you know, it's bigger. And it it has some of that, but it just never. Yeah. I I wanted more of that. I wanted more of an R-rated film. Than yeah, I wanted Mouse. like rats like eating their guts <laughs> and like, like blood, intestines. Blood. Falling and he, I was, that is what that would make the movie way better, honestly. If they just if they added that element and like when they find the body, it's completely covered in like just almost bone. Because <laughs> that would be like oh that like that would add some freakiness. You yeah. know, just uh, the rats on the shoulders and then they fall down and yeah. like. Yeah, I was like, this is absurd. Come and I on. felt like the movie, there was a missed opportunity with the bully. The bully yes. gets ra- rats, <laughs> rats attack his legs, right? And he has like little, he has like band-aids all over his legs. And he's like, the rats did it. And and Danny's like, I didn't see any rats. He just fell on a shrub or a bush. <laughs> and I'm like, not to, not to say that, I mean, how old was that bully? Like 10, 11, 12 years old. Yeah. I'm like, I, we didn't need to see him like ripped apart, but. Like he's pretty awful to Danny at that one in one scene, and then the ra- yeah. and then he like you know summons the rats over, and I'm like we could have had could done a little bit more with that. Come on. <laughs> I think well, I mean hell, I would push it. Like, what if they killed him and then they're like investigating Danny? Like, <laughs> I'm making like, my own like Ben could have like head. Ben could have jumped out from the shrubs and like landed on the bully's nose and just started like well, eating like like a close up shot of like you know like blood over the and and you and they hear the bully just go ah and he just starts screaming like something like that i mean it still could have gotten a pg i think yeah oh yeah i mean <laughs> oh yeah it, 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 it definitely like what yeah. are we doing here like what are we doing here if we're gonna make a movie where rodents are taking over the city and people are dying but we're gonna shoot it edit it act it perform it in a way where it's just very tame like yeah. what, what are we doing here <laughs> They, they go for yeah, it they, they definitely they could have they could have done that and just made it at least, yeah, at least more interesting for sure because yeah that that stuff would have would have been way more i mean like we're even more 70s vibe anyway and like i i'm like it. in the last half hour i'm like if i'm the screenwriter here i would have danny more invested not just ben but all of the rats and at some point he goes to save more of the rats and the rats kill danny and then Ben, like, ha- okay, they just killed my new best friend, this boy. Now the last 20 minutes is like the clan of rats, Ben in the front, like just start eviscerating everyone in the town. <laughs> like that would have been more interesting to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and, yeah, I mean. It's and- overtaking houses upon houses of teens and adults, and they're all just screaming and they're just getting ripped apart. Like that would have been where I would have taken I, I think like I Ben agree. Ben on a revenge mission. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, that's what he did with um he he took uh he avenged his the white rat and Willard that because he was like Willard you let him die now I'm turning on you I'm gonna kill you so yeah if Danny did die that would be interesting so he's like well now I'm pissed that you kill my other friend who's a human or maybe more dramatic. Or maybe it wasn't maybe it wasn't the like the rats that killed Danny because then Ben would like turn on them. Maybe it was like oh, sure. maybe those guys get down in the sewers with their with their fire sprays and they turn the corner and they light up uh Danny by mistake. <laughs> and then we just want we just yeah. want this kid to die. We, this saying. kid the kid didn't have to die but we just i felt like and i say this of every movie i watch whether it's 2022 or 1972 like give me more stakes like give make me invested like throw more conflict more problems at me and i get i'm more interested like yeah, it was just sure. kind of this kind of like there's not a whole lot of conflict in this movie yeah it's just like and you don't really feel the fear of the town at all like the, no, the, at one point the, isn't the police car coming by he's like like they have like a loudspeaker stay in your homes 
don't leave your house and say so you don't see you anyone don't. so you're like okay they did it but you don't, <laughs> we don't see them i'm like that's what uh sam loomis needed in the original halloween instead of just walking through the neighborhood he needed to have a loudspeaker stay in your home <laughs> i'm yeah. like they had it in ben it just was like it just felt like in some ways both of these movies to me were kind of missed opportunities like could have yeah. both could have been better in different ways mm-hmm. and they're both okay they're worthy i think of a of a watch if you're a horror fan it's like worth a look but there wasn't a whole lot of terror in this first movie of my month of terror yeah on, on film of <laughs> and i think it's i mean it's relatively pretty impressive what they how they train these rats because today yeah. They would totally be CGI. They would yeah. not train these rats. They wouldn't have any of that. The fact that they did take the time in order to actually train these rats in order to do these things, especially like the one that plays Ben. Like, yeah. I mean, they're not doing much, but they are, you know, going to the spots they need to go to. They are, they're doing some, which is, that's pretty impressive for sure. Yeah. I mean, as soon as the new Call of the Wild movie came out with Harrison Ford and the, the dog in the whole movie is a CGI creation, I said they're not they're never gonna use a real animal in a movie again. <laughs> no, for sure. It's and like the god, I had no desire to see that movie anyway, but like the eyes of that dog look like they were human eye, like they were like they, they, they were too there's too much white in the dog's eyes, and I was like, it looks like a cartoon, like this is so stupid. Like, I on. watched it. I, I watched that movie and it 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 works fairly well considering okay. it is a CGI creation, but the problem is there's never for one second do you believe it's really tangibly there and that's what takes you out of the movie keeps you a little bit emotionally removed from the yeah. events because you know it's not really there but uh, i mean they've come a long way they they look you know these cgi creations can look really spectacular now but there is something about like you watch ben and those are real yeah and almost except for the end when in the, when it's like the wide shots and they're clearly yeah. not they're clearly not killing rats there but yeah, which makes yeah. sense that would have been worse if they were like just showing like real footage of oh, rats yeah. being killed. I would have been like, I know. What? But when I was watching this, I was like, I was like, I swear to God, if he's showing me more animals dying in our life, I, I'm not. I mean, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I was. But I, I, you could definitely tell that they were like just making it look like they were hurting, but they weren't actually doing anything. So that that was a relief because yeah, I remember <laughs> when we were watching uh, Wake and Fright, and I was like, are they killing these kangaroos? And yeah. Then, I was like, I think they're really killing these things, but yeah, in this in this and in Willard, you can tell they're not. They're just they're just doing some weird cuts to make it look yeah. like it's happening when it's really not. I don't. It's not. I, I'm not trying to only have you on for episodes of movies where animals die. It's not the yes, and then um, Sunday Bloody Sunday. Sunday, Sunday the had the dog. dog. Car, and I was like, oh my god, come on. Unless I mean, maybe I mean, I guess that's an element from. You know, film 50 years ago, kill an animal. Go ahead. <laughs> no, we don't like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's some there's some stuff I liked. I liked the performance of Montgomery. I did like the change of pace and setting when they go in the sewers. Like when it's first just Annie and Ben and they're like exploring the sewers. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. You didn't get a whole lot of like in Willard. There wasn't much outside of just like being in homes and being at work and that was kind of nice, like a diff, like a change of pace and setting. And I do think the movie overall is a little bit more faster paced than Willard. I appreciated yeah. that, but it, yeah, it, I'm happy that there's not another three sequels I have to watch. Like yeah. it felt like we've kind of told the story we needed by the end of this one. And it's like, there's not much more to say. <laughs> yeah. There really wasn't much more. I mean, they should have just killed Ben in the end, I guess, because I mean, <laughs> well, no, you know what? I love I, I love how he like he comes in at the end and he's like clearly injured and <laughs> but still also, still okay. So yeah, I would give this movie like a six out of ten, a two and a half star out of four. It seems to be the kind of rating I'm giving a lot of these movies since I started talking about 1972 films after we got past Cabaret and The Godfather, two of the greatest movies ever. Oh, yeah. The last three months two and a half months maybe it's been mostly a lot of like not terrible movies but just like okay movies it's like a weird time i'm happy i wasn't going to the theater a lot uh that i wasn't (laughs) born yet in uh (laughs) like april may june of 72 from what i have seen for this podcast it wasn't the greatest time for movies this period no (laughs) i i mean yeah i i 
it's, I was looking at you know, other horror movies coming out around this time. Um, yeah, so do you know the other horror films I'm talking about this month on the podcast? No, I don't. So I'm doing uh, I'm doing Night of the Lepus, which is like a TV movie I want to say with Janet Lee. That one oh, could, okay. That one could go either way, but I've read some fun things about it. And then I'm doing uh, Doctor Fives Rises Again, the horror sequel to the Abominable Doctor Five, starring Vincent Price. And okay. we're closing out the month with the with the movie I've seen before. I'm very excited to talk about, and that's Alfred Hitchcock's Frenzy. We finally are getting to Alfred Hitchcock on the podcast. He made two films in the '70s. Uh, the better of the two being Frenzy, which came out in June of 72. Uh, and I th- feel like there was one other one. There was uh, Images by Robert Altman, which we talked about briefly when we were deciding on what movie to do, that mm-hmm. premiered at the Cannes Film Festival in May of 72 and then came out in theaters later in the year. Uh, I've, been, I've read a little bit about it. Apparently, it's his one and only horror film. It's like a kind of a quiet psychological horror slash thriller movie. That I'm excited to get to, but I don't think I, it didn't actually go to theaters till November. So okay. I think I'm going to wait. I think I'm going to wait till November, December to do that one. It makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, this is not a great time for horror films. The most exciting, <laughs> the most exciting horror film coming up that we're going to talk about in August uh, with my guest, uh, Jordan Downey, who has been on a few times and we both work for Wes Craven. Wes Craven's debut feature film, Last House on the Left, opened in yeah. August of 72. Have you seen Last House on the Left? So the original I've from seen, 72. I've, I have only seen I've seen the remake all the way through, but I've not seen yeah. the original all the way. But the only one I want to watch is I, I really I, I like the story of the remake. How it was brutal. Um, and so I'm, I am very interested in watching the original. I say I mean it was Craven, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, because it's it, I, I did enjoy the the, the remake. So yeah, I, I want to watch that one really bad. I'll, I'll, it's, I'll it's not a yeah it's not a fun watch the original is oh, like, it's, it's, it's brutal not. and it's it it's is. unlike any other kind of horror film those being made at least in the united states in 72 it's like bloody and and sadistic and hard to watch and it does not have it's kind of like texas chainsaw massacre before its time like two years yeah. before yeah and, i mean i remember just watching when i watched the remake i was watch. i was just like I'm super uncomfortable. So this is, I mean, this is like what 2000 and I don't know, seven or eight or something like that when this came out. The and, remake uh, was the spring of 09. 09, okay. Um, and I, even then, I was like, this is hard. This is very difficult to watch. It, is just, it, it was just, it was so real. And so, mm-hmm. like, um, they showed so much. And I know, like, they stabbed the girl in the stomach. And the way they showed it, it, it was so. <laughs> Like they, they show the knife go into her like skin and they don't yeah. they don't it's not like a quick little stab it's like yeah a, and you just, mm-hmm. oh it, it it made my screen call crawl and it well, the thing is it makes you really want to kill those bad people though you're like oh yeah like i told i i get what the parents were doing this is great yeah but the original by craven it's weird in that it's extremely low budget it's clearly the work of a first-time filmmaker some of the edits are weird and they don't work and it's kind of amateurish all the way through, but he's dealing with these really disturbing, like this disturbing subject matter and these moments of grisly violence that just, yeah. even though the movie is clearly low budget and doesn't quite work on like, just like a normal, like movie level, like it still kind of gets it gets under your skin and it's, and it's really powerful. And, yeah. and it's like the first of its kind of that kind of horror film in this era which i'm excited to talk about yes yeah, sure because i think i think ben would have been better if it had a little bit of those more terrifying elements of a movie like last house like to give it a little bit more of a kind of a scary feel because as it is now it's not it's not really terrifying in any <laughs> any regards as ben no no it's entertaining it's fun i mean there's nothing wrong <laughs> with with a movie about you know, homicidal rats. I mean, I'll always show up for that, but there could okay. have been more going on, like at least like amp up the tension, like 10 to 20%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was definitely a lot of downtime for sure. Yeah. But is there anything else you wanted to say about Ben before we move to our final two segments? No, I mean, um, I think we pretty much covered everything. And uh, I mean, like I, said, <laughs> I, 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 I like, I, I, I I think rats were a good, um, just personally, I think rats were a very good animal for them to choose. I mean, yeah, they're gross, but like, 
for me, like the relationship between a rat and a person can be very, very like strong. And that, yeah. so like, I, I, I really bought into that from personal mm. experience. And, uh-huh. um, I, I liked it. I, I was, cause I mean, you could do it with a dog and anyone would get it. Uh, but like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think my experience with rats is what made me choose. Cause you gave you, you gave me the option of which we've been wanting to watch. This or like, images. I yeah. want to do this one because I think I would have a good relationship with it. And, and I, <laughs> yeah, I definitely did. I did for sure. Yeah. No, it was fun. And, and, uh, I do like that last song a lot. Are you going to oh, be, yeah. are you going to be whistling that song for the next few days? Yeah. Um, I, I, I liked it on Spotify. So <laughs> you um, added it on Spotify. Oh yeah. I was just like, I got to I wanted to hear it a few times so I can, um, yeah, <laughs> be ready for it. <laughs> So that's Ben. So that takes us to our final two segments. First one, the divine double feature. What would you recommend someone watch right after Ben ends? Something more recent. What this came to really mind? Hard. Anything? This is hard because I'm like, it was really there's hard. not, it's not, there's not a whole lot of like animal horror films of recent years. No, like, there's, there's not. Crawl from 2019, which I talked about on the Willard episode because our final segment for the Willard episode was animal horror films. So yeah. like Jaws and movies where the terror comes from an animal or a sea creature and there's that alligator that crocodile movie crawl from 2019 i don't know if you saw Ooh, that yeah that was a good one that was good i like that so that that was like i think that might have been either my divine double feature idea or just in our final talk but that, i watched that yeah i watched that during the pandemic and yeah i really enjoyed it <laughs> that was with the daughter who goes back to save her dad right yeah yeah and yeah, it's like in florida yeah, yeah in florida yeah. yeah um see a movie that was trying to pair with this one of more of like a protect like a protective like a protective antagonist i was thinking of mama just because i know like, oh mama mm-hmm. that's what 2013 yeah just like a, a protective animal who you know that that's where my mind kind of went because i was trying to think of an animal one that like i didn't, i couldn't think really think of any and then or one where a kid befriends the the villain and like protects them in some way and doesn't let anyone like mm-hmm. harm them yeah um, Ma, and mama was this one because i like you know she's just protecting the kids and um that made me think of ben a little bit um mm-hmm. but then <sighs> yeah i mean i think i think that would be a good idea mama like a, like a horror film about a child kind of in peril like that that, yeah. that kind of matches up and yeah, then, and, yeah and, and like some kind of weird protective thing um and i, I, I can picture in my head of like uh something's gonna happen the kid's like no stop don't do it and they like that little thing backs off it's like okay well i find i find i won't i won't hurt them <laughs> um, yeah mama was my choice for that one okay um, good yeah. that's a good idea and so my choice i went with like it's a it's an animal horror film that came out in it was 2010 i want to say and it was a uh, piranha 3d Did you see that one <laughs> i was just thinking this one as well i was just like piranha so i'm have, like adam here's one, here's right? the which one adam scott was in that right oh possibly i think he was it, it had I a big remember i remember it, it doesn't open with uh it opens with richard dreyfus like in his uh jaws attire like like wearing like the outfit and then he dies <laughs> in the opening scene but it's kind of tongue in cheek. I just remember it's like it's the, the it had the kind of stylish violence that I was looking for in Ben, like that we don't get in this movie. You get it in Piranha 3D, like you get yes. mayhem, like you've never seen in a horror film before, of bodies being ripped into and just like uh, my memory of that movie was I saw it with my younger brother, and about halfway through, like when it's like really the worst part of just like the mayhem and. The violence at some point he got up and left the theater i thought to go to the bathroom or something and he was gone for a while <laughs> and he finally <laughs> came back in 15 20 minutes later and he said uh he was on the verge of having to puke so he had to just go wow. and kind of like walk around the lobby and wow. come back. <laughs> like the, the 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 violence was so grisly that he couldn't take it anymore and had to leave the theater Man. and that's the only time that's ever happened at, with, with seeing a movie with him so and that that's also, my memory of that movie <laughs> there's also eight like you know what's another one arachnophobia even though it's older arachnophobia. arachnophobia yep i love spiders overtaking that community you get death scenes wow. of kind of random characters yeah. turning off a light and then dying and 
Yeah, yeah arachnophobia if we were to take it and older. And they real animals too. It was real spiders. Real spiders. Yeah. Oh man. You know what? Arachnophobia. You, that, yeah. That's it. That's arachnophobia. You could never make that movie today with real spiders. That would be oh. CGI spiders today. Oh, for sure. And but like, ah, yeah, that movie's so good. It freaks me out so much. And that's a Disney movie too, which I think is fascinating. That would have been. It's not. It's not Disney. Disney. It was like. It, uh, Disney, it was. It was like their. It was their distributor for like PG thirteen yes. films. And it was yeah. like their. It was. It was their first. Um, One of their first like like, like non, non like G rated PG rated. Yeah, that would yeah. make sense. That that was one of the scariest movies I remember seeing as a kid. Like that came out in mm-hmm. 1990, and I want to say my parents rented it. Like I think it would have been I would have been yeah. I would have been about six or seven, and there was an open like I was I've I've been freaked out about spiders my whole life, and that movie did was not a good one to see at like age six. <laughs> no, no, I saw yeah I remember seeing it as a kid, and it was absolutely terrifying. I don't think I made it, it very fun, far. Though. There were some pretty funny uh, elements to it, though. Yeah, John Goodman's really funny. Oh, it, yeah. That's a good, that movie's a good mix of, like, terror and comedy. That's a good mix. And yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time. If it ever shows up on streaming or something, I might watch that again. That was fun. Piranha it, 3D you know, is not in that, I mean, I mean, Piranha 3D is, like, legitimately, like, scary and shocking and, like. Yeah. And, 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 you're, and you go through the ringer on that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, all I remember Piranha 3D mostly is that the, uh. Ted from Schitt's Creek plays the male, like the male. Oh, lead. okay. Uh, and I remember as a kid, I was like, oh my God, he's so cute. Uh, it was it, the one major movie with uh, that cute guy from Vampire Diaries, Steve McQueen's like grandson. His name is Steve McQueen. Like he just kept oh, okay. the same name. And he, was, he wasn't the main guy in Vampire Diaries. He was like the brother. He was okay. like that younger one. And uh, when I worked in casting for two years, he came in to audition one day. And I was like, this is the cutest guy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and then and then a few months later, he got cast on Vampire Diary. So I kind of watched oh. that for a while because he was in it. Yeah. And then when I saw that he was the lead of Piranha 3D, I was like, I'm going. <laughs> I don't know if he made another. I don't know if he was the lead of another movie after that. But we have that on film forever. Interesting. Piranha 3D. Piranha 3D. All right. So that takes us to the end segment. So this was a tough one. I'm like, I mean, what are we going to do? Talk about Lee Montgomery's career. I was like, we've we've talked about animal horror films before. We've talked about horror sequels before. So my very specific subgenre here is 70s horror sequels. Before we get to those, there's not only a few to talk about. Uh, since you weren't on our discussion that time when we talked about horror sequels last year, like if you had to pick like your two or three favorite, just if anything, Andrew, like sequels to horror films like what would be in your top two or three if you only pick a couple well, like any sorry. horror sequel i think you already know scream 2 is my favorite one scream 2 uh, scream is 2 your fa- is your is number one so you're my favorite horror movie sequel yes scream uh, 2 is I, your I, favorite I, horror sequel okay yes i loved it uh actually conjuring 2 i enjoyed more than conjuring yes mm-hmm. that was conjuring on my top was list yeah loved it um uh, there's another one I mean, Insidious Chapter Two is okay. It's not uh-huh. my favorite. Um, it was decent enough. Yeah. Um, Connor Two stands out a lot for me, though. Um, Any of the Halloween, Halloween sequels? Halloween, Halloween Kills was trash. Yeah, I like it. I like that more than I like that more than others. Halloween H Two O I enjoy. That's always like a good for me a good sequel to watch. Like, okay, Halloween H Two O is not like the greatest movie, but that that is a great example of a, a very entertaining sequel. That it, it you know in the month of October, if you just want to like kick back with a you know with some popcorn and just watch something fun, like H Two O is a great quick watch. It's really fun. Oh yeah, um, Jeepers Creepers Two. I also love that. Oh, okay. I'm not, I, yeah, I'm a sucker for Jeepers Creepers as well. Um, what? I just had it in my head and now it's gone. Um, like most of the big franchises, there's at least one sequel I enjoy. Like uh, my pick for the best horror sequel on that episode was Wes Craven's New Nightmare from mm, 1994. Oh yeah, so good. Which for me is like the most creative sequel to a horror film of a franchise that I've ever seen. Two years yeah. before Scream, doing kind of a meta sequel where we're examining the lives of the people that were in the original and how the movie affected them and because the franchise has been uh has been ended by killing off the main villain freddy krueger now that entity 
has nowhere to go since the sequels are no more. So the entity is now going to enter the real world and affect the people who were involved in making the movie. That yeah. is one of the most original horror movie sequel ideas ever. <laughs> Absolutely. I 100% agree. I know people were discussing if Stream 6 was going to do that. And I was like, no. I was just like... All right, is that where we're heading? Are, are we going to get to a sequel where that. it's it's Nev Campbell as herself in the yes. sequel? Like, or is that we where we're going? It was going to be... Um, that it would make sense, actually. It would be at some Nick point. Campbell playing an actress who played Sydney. Was, <laughs> that was another one, and I was just like, I was like, stop. It would. I mean, would I go see it? Of course, but I don't. Yeah, I don't want. I, I feel like you know, rip off of New Nightmare. Yeah, I, you know, I've never really thought about that. I like if it was handled delicately and written extremely well that would be an interesting place to take a Scream sequel since it's like, I mean, how many more adventures with Sydney can we have? It would yeah. be, if there was something a little bit different than New Nightmare, not just have it be the same kind of thing, but like have a, like a movie about Nev Campbell being stalked by a Scream super fan. Like she's playing a version of herself. That could be interesting. I don't know where it you would go be. after that. The way the world is. I mean, there are definitely people who, are crazy on like soccer so like i don't think she would do that she's a she's a mother like she's got kids i don't think she would do that unless it was like just really really clever and couldn't say no it's like i think if wes craven wanted to do that <laughs> like, oh yeah but um i don't know maybe. i don't i don't have I, I think you're gonna have higher hopes for more scream sequels than i do for me after five i don't really <laughs> i'm not i'm not like soup i don't have like super high hopes for what comes next well i think where this there's no rules for them now i feel like there's no rule to a sequel of a requel and now i feel like they could possibly make it go wherever they want uh right and, they, and, and they mentioned it they're like but, but we like it's all open to us now we can do whatever we want in a way yeah and i think that's kind of a cool that's a cool thought. It's like maybe we can re now we can make our own rules for what movies should be. That's um, true. I like that aspect of that. So we'll see. But uh, New Nightmare but was, is an excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And, re and real quick, Nev Campbell, I guess, shared in the last week I read, she shared to a fan her ranking of the sequels. Did you hear this? Yeah. It and was, she ranked uh, four last. She, it, was, yeah. uh, it was one, two, five, three, four. I saw that. And saw that. the comments were saying like, like she might've ranked it by her experience of making the film yeah. more so than the quality, because I guess there were a lot of behind the scenes shenanigans on screen four and that there were a lot of rewrites and, and it was like kind of in some ways a harder movie for her to make. Yes. Cause I, I'm like, I don't know how you rank four last. I mean, she's great in four. It's so good. Four. And every, every time I watch number four, I like it more and more um yeah and it, it has it's pushed itself up to like maybe being on par with scream 2 with me like i still watched it again recently on par like, with your favorite horror sequel of all time one of my favorites <laughs> mm, yeah kind of i mean they're all fun now yeah, all now i think we all agree that that filter you know they use on scream 4 is awful i hate that filter that they like this shot the weird like the shiny glit yeah yeah i know yeah i've noticed Everyone that too about that and they're like if they didn't have that it would bother less people and i watch it like yeah. i hate that thing but it is a very it's a great story it's so good and i like jill more and more every year i'm like she is like she's right she's pretty it, it's very it's very ahead of its time in meta right in um but yeah that's i think conjuring 2 also for us conjuring 2 one, is great three, Paranormal Activity 3 is also my yep. favorite as well. Love that movie. It's mm -hmm. so good. It's so inventive. That's the best sequel of Paranormal Oh, yeah. Oh, all three. those for sure. That's definitely the best one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and 10 Cloverfield Lane. Fantastic. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, the Cloverfield sequel, which was yeah. in like, it was kind of a different beast of a movie, but, right? Yes. Until the last 10 minutes. Yeah. And it yeah. Was we didn't talk about it. That was on my second 10 of uh, 2016. I really enjoyed that movie. That yeah. was good. Because I remember I saw it. We saw Batman versus Superman, which was a slog. And then the next day we saw the Cloverfield Lane movie. And I was like, this is so much better. <laughs> like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm much more interested in this 
the story yeah. than the last one. I we love, I love Cloverfield. That was a great, that was an entertaining. So, movie. so yeah. So at the end here, let's get into seventies horror sequel. So the horror sequel really comes into its own in the eighties. We don't see as many in the seventies, but there were some. So kind of starting with, and not that they're horror films or more science fiction movies, but Planet of the Apes kind of got things started with a, a sequel every year for a while. Between 1970 and 1973, we get four Planet of the Apes sequels. Night of Dark Shadows was a horror movie sequel, came out right after House of Dark Shadows. And then the big kind of horror hits, we got uh, The Exorcist got a sequel, Jaws got a sequel, The Omen got a sequel, and Night of the Living Dead got a sequel. Those are kind of the big ones. Have you seen any of those sequels? Um, I know I've seen Jaws 2. I Jaws can't. 2. Um, I have... I it's all very blurry. I know I've seen I've seen some of the Omen. Oh, the Omen was my first radar movie I watched as a kid. Ooh, yeah, Omen's great. I was terrified of it. Uh, my sister watched it, and I was a, uh, yeah. I was like, let's watch this. And I remember that the nanny hanging herself out the window. Oh like, yeah, that scene is like hard man. <laughs> terrifying. All for you, and then she oh uh, yeah, that movie. It's all for you. Oh, <laughs> yes, and oh yeah, the party. Damien. like that's epic. I love that. Uh, but I know I, I feel like I haven't seen many of the sequels. Like most of the big classics. horror films of the '70s get a sequel, but some came later. Like Texas Chainsaw didn't get one until the '80s, and Carrie didn't get one until 1999. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little later. A little later. <laughs> so, so for me, like if I had to pick my three favorite horror sequels of the '70s. Uh, I would probably do, I really liked Night of Dark Shadows from 71. We talked about in the podcast last year. I liked it more than House of Dark Shadows. Like I thought it was scarier. It had a lot more suspense and a better story and a better cast. And was just, I was way more invested, even though as my guest talked about, it was a very truncated version of the, of what the director wanted. Apparently the director had 24 hours to remove like 40 minutes from the movie. Wow. The, the producer said, you have 24 hours, go into the editing room. I want you to remove 40 minutes, get this down to 90 minutes. You have one day. And I'm like, the movie that came out of that is pretty solid. So I'm like, wow, he did a good job. Because yeah. <laughs> you don't feel yeah. like a ton is missing. Yeah, that's good. And then my second favorite would be Damien Omen 2. I do think it, it's been a while. I just got the Scream Factory box set uh, for Christmas. So I'm excited. I was this summer, I'm going to dig into those. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch uh, Omen 2 again. I remember Omen 2 was a, it wasn't quite as good as the original, but pretty solid. Okay. I don't think three and four are very good, but two was, was really, was really terrific. And, and it's got a good cast and it's made pretty soon after the Omen. It's just a year, it's like, what was it? Two years later. And uh, pretty, pre still pretty scary. I think the one great horror movie sequel of the whole decade is Dawn of the Dead. Have you seen Dawn of the Dead? Oh, um, I no, I've not. Which was I'm my not. pick? Was my pick for my second favorite horror right. movie sequel ever? Night of the Living Dead is a an iconic yes. black and white classic. Yeah. I watch it at least once every couple of years. It's so good. I like the sequel even more. It's the one where they're at the mall. And they're basically trying to fend off from hundreds and hundreds of zombies overtaking this uh, suburban mall. And uh, it's really funny and really scary and grisly at times. And it's a great, it's got, you know, great message and, you know, and George Romero clearly having fun with the concept and leaning into let's make, let's make something even more daring and, and interesting than, than the 68 original. And, uh, it's long and there's many versions of the movie you can watch if you get the right dvd it's got like four versions of the movie they're all worthy to me i really enjoy that one so dawn yeah, of the dead would be like if you've never seen any every movie we talked about for the last 90 plus minutes like if you haven't seen dawn of the dead that is okay. the movie to watch <laughs> i will because I, I, I mean i've heard of i've just heard some people talk about dawn of the dead because i've seen night living dead and but i i I'm just lazy. I never, I never get into uh, like watching sequels. But I always heard how good Dawn of the Dead is. No, is it is it same character or is, nope? Is it, uh, Completely or different movie? cast. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, like everyone dies by the end of Night of the Living Dead, so there wouldn't be anyone to be in the sequel. It was made ten years later, and it's in color, and it's a new group, and they're you know zombies 
have really just, I think, taken over most of the world at this point. And so they look for shelter at this gigantic suburban mall. And most of the movie is inside the mall. And so that gives George Romero opportunities to play with like uh, escalators and, (laughs) and like, you know, they're, 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 you know, breaking into, you know, you know, rooms of, it's got a lot of food and they're putting on clothes and, and it's just like, it's kind of tongue in cheek and fun, but also has scary moments towards the end. And these bikers who get mutilated and all sorts of great <laughs> stuff. So it is worth okay. your time. It's a really high quality horror film. It's really great. Roger Ebert gave it four stars. I remember and wow. some critics really adored it and it was released unrated. It was so violent that they could not get an R rating. So it came oh, out wow. in 1978, uh, the same year as Halloween, they brought it out to theaters. I can't remember if it was at the end of that year, maybe early into 79, but they released it unrated in theaters. So it could never really make a whole lot of money because they could not secure an R rating for it. It was just too violent. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, that's to get you to watch it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So check that out. Uh, any other horror sequels you want to talk about before we wrap up here? Uh, it's funny you say, uh, I was thinking of people banding together. Um, it's uh, Purge 2, I thought was well. Oh, awesome Purge 2, Purge. Anarchy. Yeah, I liked it way more. Because I, 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 I think, uh, this, you know, here, you know, Purge is, you know, the people can do whatever the hell they want for 24 hours. Yeah. And you only get to see what's inside the house in that first one. So getting to see the city outside was so much more interesting. I was so yeah. much more invested and in, like, or just interested in like, what's going on. Like, cause it's, it's mayhem. And it's like, we don't really, we only see that from the perspective of a house instead of the city. So uh, I was discussing the Purge movies with uh, a friend yesterday. And um, yeah, that movie uh, is definitely a sequel that was worth, um, was worth the time. Yeah. And definitely, I, I enjoyed it much more than the first one expanded the world i remember walking out of the purge in 2013 i'm like so if they make a sequel they obviously they need to show us what it looks like outside the house and then that's what they did i was like okay that made sense and yeah i mean horror sequels go all the way back to the like the 1930s i mean one of my favorite sequels ever is the bride of frankenstein which i thought expanded on the world of 1931's frankenstein and director james whale took the concept and kind of did his own thing and so the, it's not like horror sequels got started in the 80s by any means they go all the way back to the beginning mm-hmm. of movies and uh if you look for them they're always around not as many until we get to the slasher yeah craze of the 80s but they're always around and, and i i say all the time about about sequels whether it's for a horror film or any other kind of movie like expand on the world give us more give us something yeah. different and interesting and that yeah, was absolutely. uh not so much the case with ben no they, didn't. no, they didn't. They could have. I like, felt there's like more rats. They could live in a sewer. Yeah, room. it's not oh, enough to just give me more rats. Yeah, <laughs> like we need. Blood and gore. You know, I like that it wasn't just further adventures of Willard. Like that would have just been kind of, you know, giving us the same thing. But I, I'm not sure if the story of Danny was the best way to go into, especially since, as I said before. A lot of the movie kind of feels like a tame Disney family yeah. film. And I'm like, this is supposed to be a horror movie. Like, come on. Yeah. Totally but agree. as always, Andrew, it's fun to talk to you today about another horror yeah. movie. As we wrap up here, tell our listeners where they can find you online. Yeah. Um, me and on so all social media, Instagram, Twitter, um, Tumblr, you know, I'm still Tumblr. on there. I, I, I sat and say every time, like, I'm still on Tumblr. I don't really. I don't post on it, so I just look at funny things. And look at the movie. <laughs> I, follow, I follow a lot of movie stuff, just like, just like facts or like, just like, um, yeah, stuff about film on there. Um, Ar Campbell ninety four. Um, but yeah, it's 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 always a pleasure to be on here. I love <laughs> it's, it's, it's it is always funny. Also, I, it was cool to talk about this movie with my mom. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, these are when you know, this is a movie that she grew up with, and it's kind of it's cool to be able to have that conversation with my parents later on about these things that I'm watching that they got to watch. And, yeah, um, that's been yeah. fun for me too because my parents were of the age in the early 70s where they were seeing a lot of these movies. So I've, I've you know, those ask like, what, so what are you talking about on the podcast in the last few weeks? And, and I'll mention some titles and they'll be like, oh, I saw that in the theater and blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. and it's kind of neat to like a, a little segment of their lives that I don't know a lot about, like when they were teenagers and then they like hearing a title of a 72 movie or a 71 movie at like, it, it brings up a memory for them and they shared it occasionally. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. So that's an yeah. element I've really talked about that I really enjoy sure. as well. So that's cool. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here. All right. Andrew, always happy to have you on. As I said before, uh, the upcoming episodes for our month of terror, we've got some good ones coming up. We've got uh, Night of the Lepus with Janet Lee, the sequel to the abominable Dr. Fibes, Dr. Fibes Rises Again. And we're finally getting to Alfred Hitchcock. We're talking about his 1972 thriller Frenzy, his one and only R-rated movie. Very excited to talk about oh, that yeah. coming up here. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock, old enough, like he made films from the 1920s to the 1970s. One of the very few filmmakers, I would say, maybe the only one who was making silent films and then worked long enough to make an R-rated movie in the 70s. Wow. Like, that's kind of cool. Like you don't see that ever. So we'll talk oh, yeah. about that as well. So thanks for being here, Andrew. Thanks to all of you for listening. Uh, you can find us online at filmat50.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And check out my YouTube channel, Brian Rowe Video. If you like Oscar movie history, it is the YouTube channel for you. Lots of fun stuff being posted there every week. Until next time, remember, 50 never looked this good. <laughs>